Hey pilots, Hobbs back yet again, this time bringing you the G2 Raider, or as I lovingly like to refer it to it, the Fat Raider. I love me some Fat Raider, it's a lot of fun for a G2 mech. And however, compared to the G2 Assault, it is a lot more difficult to use, uh, pause here for the mech stats. In fact, I think calling it a G2 Raider, other than maybe the weapons and the similarity and the ability, uh, the slight similarity, I'd say this thing is almost a, a, an entire mech on its own, but again, we'll discuss this as we go into the game, and uh, i show you how to do it, but this is a very difficult mech, but let's get started. Okay, so getting right into it, uh, the weapons for the G2 Raider are the Corsair KLA XT as the secondary, and the primary is the T32 Bolt XT. And the ability is called G2 Blitz, and of course I'm going to go over all these things separately. But as for the weapons, it, it's pretty similar to the T32 Bolt on the Raider and the Predator, the, the, the T32 XT. It, it, in fact, the stats are exactly the same. The reason why they're separate is that way they can rebalance the G2 Raider if need be, without having to affect the weapons on the Predator or the Raider. Now, the KLA XT actually is different from the original Corsair KLA. Uh, compared to the original Corsair KLA, the XT has a lot more burst damage. A single shot will do more damage on both the Merv and Grenade mode. However, the reload time is much longer on the uh, XT Corsair. The reload time is about three and a quarter seconds versus the, the original Corsair KLA's reload time is only uh, two and a half, two and three quarters of a second. So. With the KLA XT, you really want to be careful to not miss your shots, because if you miss your shot, you're down for a lot longer, and, uh, yeah, it's really punishing if you miss your shot. And, yeah, it's just like on the Raider, you really do not want to miss your shots, and, of course, the Merv is a lot harder to land than the Grenade Mode, so... And especially because of the how slow the reload time on this thing is, a small tip that I suggest is if you're not, if you don't feel like you're going to be able to land up a Merv shot like within one or two seconds, you can line up a decent shot and make sure that you hit your target. Personally, I'd switch over to the grenade mode just to make sure you can land your shots because the grenade mode will have a lot more splash damage rather than the Merv. You have to land a direct hit with it. Generally, I use the Merv against. Uh, bigger targets like class B's or class C's, but against class A's I'll generally switch back over to the grenade mode just to make sure that I can land the damage on them, because I, I do not want to miss it be leaving myself very open and vulnerable to, uh, you know, taking a strong attack, because, you know, not only is it punishing if you miss your shots, but because it's a heavy mech, it's also positioning is very much a key thing, so if you end up in a bad place, you're not able to escape, and uh, yeah, it can just really, really be bad if you try to charge in somewhere, and then, you know, you just, you're not able to do anything because you get end up being surrounded. It's just like the original Raider. If you get surrounded by too many opponents, or, you know, just with any heavy mech, get surrounded by too many opponents at once, it's just not going to end well for you. Okay, and just, of course, if you didn't like the T32 Bolt on the Raider, obviously you're probably not going to be very attracted to this mech, because th it's the only weapons loadout is with T32 Bolt XT, so... If you didn't like the T32 Bolt on the Raider, then don't get this mech, but if you like that, and you also like the Brawler, because the way this thing plays, I mean, like I said, it's kind of its own thing. I'd say it's a cross between the Brawler and the Raider. Uh, like, you know, main reason why they call it a Raider is because of the, the weapons loadout and the ability. But other than that, this mech plays very much like a Brawler, except, you know, a little bit lighter. You gotta be careful. I mean, it has the same speed as a Brawler, but it's got, like, the armor of a Vanguard without the extra mobility, so... You gotta be careful. I'd say this is, like, the heaviest glass cannon in the game. I mean, don't get me wrong, this thing has some insane burst damage. I'm... Because it'll... what You can one-shot a Technician with a fully charged, uh, Bolt XT and a Merv from the KLA XT. That's, that's an instant death for any technician. Just those two weapons alone, if you land a straight direct hit, any the technician will just be instantly dead. Heck, even scouts and I think maybe infiltrators are also will just be insta-gipped with that combo. So yes, this mech has an insane amount of burst damage and that's just something you want to keep in mind. But however, its regular mobility isn't that great. I mean, as I said, it only walks a tiny bit faster than a brawler and it's pretty light. But what makes up for that is when your ability is active. And as I said before, the ability is called G2 Blitz and it actually does work differently from the original Blitz on the Raider, so try to pay attention. Okay, so how G2 Blitz works is that while it's active, your walk speed is greatly increased, not your boost speed. Now, that might sound kind of bad, but Trust me, in a heavy mech like this, any kind of a boost speed like this, I mean, as you can see me on screen when I activate it, it moves pretty fast, but 
Also, it does drain your fuel quite a bit, so when you do use this ability, you better make sure that you can get the job done or that you're going to commit to a situation because, you know, once you charge in, your fuel is probably going to be gone and... <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but yeah, your fuel is going to be gone and as I said, your fuel is your mobility and you're not going to be able to escape with, uh, you know, no fuel in your tank. And the regen on of uh, the fuel regen on this mech isn't the greatest either, so you really got to watch your fuel when... Uh, using your G2 Blitz, but yeah, as I said, it greatly increases your walk speed, but not your boost speed, so don't even, don't really try to bother with boosting while the ability is active. However, I mean, that might seem like a bad thing again, but like I said, for a C-Class, this thing makes it, it, it makes it the fastest C-Class, and the ability actually does last for quite a while. It'll last for about, uh, maybe, I think, what, uh, four, maybe five seconds? But yeah, I mean, it's great, and what's great about it is that because it increases your walk speed by a lot for like a C-Class, it makes it really great to flank in the C-Class because, you know, if you're just walking, it's completely stealthy on the radar and they won't be able to detect you, so you can usually, uh, you can pull off some stuff that people just do not expect. I mean, that's the main, uh, main advantage of this thing is that people just do not expect this thing. I mean, honestly, like the first time when I saw this thing and I saw it using the G2 Blitz charging at me, I mean, there's a special little animation that the mech does when it does it, and the only way I can describe it is like a starving sumo wrestler rushing to the front of a line at an all-you-can-eat ramen buffet. I mean, seriously, it's just it's just such an odd sight, and people just do not expect it, and it really catches them off guard, and it's great for rushing people down. Now, I will tell you this, that technically this mech isn't classified as an assassin mech like the original Raider was. Uh, this is actually in the defensive section along with the brawler, and as I said, this actually plays a lot like a brawler. In fact, uh, going into the basic playstyle of how to use it, play it like you would a brawler. In fact, if you haven't seen my brawler video, go watch that so you'll have a better idea of how to use it. It's just basically, it's a brawler, it's a flak brawler, except it has the, you know, a T32 and a Corsair instead. I mean, once you get used to the uh, difference in the weapons, you know, it's not too hard. It's in fact, I'd say it's much more like the Brawler, except you just really don't want to miss your secondary weapon, because, you know, it has a lot longer of a reload. And also remember that you don't have as much armor. But you do have a speed boost, and that's where the Raider element comes in, so play it like a Brawler, except with s sudden surprise uh, moments of aggression. So play it defensively when you can, but when you need to, you can suddenly, you know, get a lot of speed, charge after someone, take them out, and, you know, catch them off guard. That's definitely what the, uh, the G2 Blitz is best for, is for catching people off guard. Like, a good example, if you're fighting around a corner, uh, like a lot of times what I'll do is if I can fight, if I'm fighting someone around a corner, I'll suddenly hit the, uh, I'll hit my ability and I'll go around the long way and they'll expect me to come from that corner again and they'll be watching there, but then, you know, before they even realize it, I'm already behind them because I use my G2 Blitz to quickly and stealthily get right behind them and then just lay waste to them because they weren't expecting me to be there at that time. So that really does play into how you can play off guard, catching people off guard. Although, I wouldn't use it to uh, completely charge in and, you know, be aggressive, like, you know, try to punch through a line. Sometimes you can pull it off, it's really hard. I mean, there have been a couple times where I saw an enemy technician and I knew I need to take it out. So I hit my ability, I charge through the enemy line, I pass everybody else, I manage to one-shot the technician pretty much, you know, like right off the bat, and then I use the remainder of my ability to get the hell out of there. It, it's a great combination, it's definitely good for a surprise. You know, I rush in, BANG! That technician is gone, and then rush out. These people just do not expect it. It's over before they know it. And they don't expect such a heavy mech to be capable of that type of thing. And of course, another good use for it is that, you know, I mean, the cooldown is like only half as long as a regular blitz, so... You know, it's only 25 seconds. It's great to escape with as well. I mean, you know, if you feel like you're taking a huge beating, you can easily escape away using the G2 Blitz. Just remember not to boost, but yeah, you can escape. And you can also do it stealthily too, because, you know, you're only walking and it does not show up on radar. But yeah, I use it all the time to escape. In fact, you've probably seen a couple times in the video I've already used it to escape. And not only that, I mean, sometimes you don't really have to use it to charge in on somebody. Some, sometimes it feels like you just want a little bit of extra speed and maneuverability while you're fighting a person. You can also use that ability right there too, because sometimes I'll pop the ability when I'm trying to fight like a really mobile class. Like maybe, like maybe I'm trying to fight an A class, I will usually pop, I'll sometimes pop the ability if I accidentally get caught out in the open against them. That way they can't dance around me as easily because I'm moving practically as fast as they are, and so it helps out with that. 
And yeah, that's basically the G2 Blitz. Pretty much what it does is that it makes your uh, big fat C-Class move uh, almost as... I'd say it's probably a, like a speedy B-Class, maybe not quite as fast as an A-Class, but yeah. It it's, has the advantage of basically the, it being the fastest C-Class out there for a limited time, and you have to use that time wisely. And also, after you use it again, uh, your mobility will be hamstringed after you use the G2 Blitz because you will be out of fuel as it does drain fuel. So remember when you use this ability, try to use it when you have a full fuel gauge. That way you can uh, maximize the uh, time that the ability is active because the ability doesn't have a timer like uh, the normal Blitz does. It, it, it stops working as soon as the fuel runs out. But like I said, the cooldown is only 25 seconds so it's not as long as the uh, original Blitz. Yeah, but aside from the ability, that's where the hardest part of it is, because you won't always have the ability activated. I mean, while the ability is active, this thing is a powerful force to be reckoned with, assuming that you can land your shots and while well, you're moving that fast. But, you know, normally it's, it's you have to play it like a brawler, a light brawler, because and that's where the hardest part comes in, because not because the brawler, again, is a much more defensive mech, and if you try to play this uh, mech a little bit too aggressively, then you really should. That's where problems will come in because, you know, like I said, uh, the heavy mech, it, especially without support, it'll just get overwhelmed very easily because this mech is not as good at dealing with more than one target at a time. And obviously, of course, that this thing has very limited range because of the T-32 and how big the spread is, and geez, that scout went right up my ass in that clip. But yeah, anyways, the T-32 is only good for, like, point-blank encounters, and the KLA Merv, you know, it's only good for point-blank as well. Like, you know, that, anything further than, like, you know, right up close in somebody's face, you mean, the only thing you can use is the KLA's grenade mode, and, you know, that has a long reload time, so you're not gonna be able to output very much, uh, damage out of range, so... Yeah, and also, because of the, you know, if you don't already know, there actually are turning caps, so... The heavier mechs actually turn slightly slower than the lighter mechs in the game. So, even like up close and personal, sometimes light mechs will tend to dance around you really easily because, you know, they can just move really quickly. And, you know, sometimes you won't always be able to turn your camera and keep up with them. That's the main part that'll be really hard because at up that close against, like, you know, really speedy mechs, if you're not using, like, a corner as, like, a buffer zone, like, you know, to make it sure it's like, okay, this person has to poke out of this corner and they're, and I can just shoot once they poke their face out in order to, you know, get them instead of, like, having some, uh, you know, a little A-class buzzing around your head, which is obviously a lot harder to hit than someone that just pokes out every now and then. And also, when I talk about the turning caps, the only, I, I can tell you this from piloting heavy mechs, the only time I ever really notice where it's, like, you know, it's affecting me is when a light mech is, like, right, literally right next to me and it's, like, you know, popping over my head and, you know, dodging around. That's the only time it feels like the turning rate's a little bit slow. But other than that, like, even at a small distance, it's still, yeah, I, I still think, you know, you can easily track somebody. But yeah, it's only when someone's, like, you know, literally, like, right next to you, like, almost, like, basically hugging your mech. That's the only time where a light mech will be able to buzz around your head and your turning speed probably won't be able to keep up with it. And yeah, you know, just lastly going over a couple things about the playstyle, is just remember that, you know, play it defensively like a brawler, make sure you're keeping near cover, keep with your team whenever you can, and, uh, you know, play defensively. I mean, this is great at defense, it's like, like I said, it's essentially, it's a brawler that has more burst damage, but a little bit less armor. Then it has a sudden speed boost whenever you feel like you need it. So, you know, you can use it essentially as kind of a fast brawler in that sense, you know. But like I said, it takes a lot of getting used to because, like, it, it's just with all heavy mechs, it's very punishing when it comes to bad positioning, and of course, you don't want to miss your shots with the KLA. Now, and of course, to kind of wrap up as always, I'm going to go over my items and internals. Of course, items are still the same, still shield, detonator, and repair charge. As, uh, as you saw earlier, I, you know, I love shields, especially in this mech, because it can make really good use of dueling inside of shields. But yeah, and the internal setup actually is slightly different. I actually use, well, the only thing that's different is that instead of the basic deflectors, I use the basic fuel converter on it, because what the basic fuel converter does is that any damage I take, 1% of that damage I get that I take is actually converted into fuel, and so while my G2 Blitz is active, as I take damage, it'll actually refuel my fuel gauge, and then it'll make my G2 Blitz last even longer than it normally could, so... That, that's kind of a ni nice little plus, and that's kind of the reason why I have the basic fuel converter. And also, I have the evasive device on this mech, so when I get low on health, the G2 Blitz, I'll move even faster than uh, if I had, you know, if 
when the G2 Blitz is active. Because, you know, it's even more multiplied. I like Even like when the Blitz isn't active, I'll still get a small speed boost from the evasive device. When I have half health and then at quarter health, I get even more of a speed boost. But if I add the G2 Blitz on top of that, I move insanely fast. I mean, I'm talking like, at that point, yeah, I will move as fast as an A-Class. And the, yeah, the evasive device does help. And now, while you shouldn't really try to fly, because obviously the G2 Blitz, it doesn't affect you while you're flying, but I do have the air compressor on this thing for the same reasons as I do in my brawler, in case I get stuck in the air, or, you know, just just to help with smoothness of piloting and, and for some maneuverability whenever I need it. But other than that, you know, I don't go like, you know, I don't fly around everywhere with my air compressor, you know, and try to, you know, uh, stay in the air. No, that's not what you want to do in the G2 Raider. But yeah, I have the air compressor just in case I need it. But yes, this was the Fat Raider, and it uh, looks like I am like was able to wrap up a little bit early, but yes, this is one of my favorite mechs, and remember, this mech actually is really damn hard to get used to because of how clunky the controls feel at first, but you know, if you can get used to it, it's a lot of fun, and just remember that that's what the G2 uh, mechs were made for. G2 mechs are supposed to be more for fun rather than, you know, just, you know, flat out combat reliability like the G1 mechs. That way, people couldn't be crying, pay to win, pay to win, because of how long the G2 mechs take to get if you try to grind it for free. But yeah, I think this pretty much concludes like, the initial mech videos I have, because there are no more mechs unless there's going to be any new ones, so at this point I'm probably going to make uh, different videos. I'll probably start doing more fundamental stuff, like, you know, doing my shield uh, tutorial and things like the teamwork video I promised you guys. I'm going to even teach you guys some mech maneuvers, but I'm probably also going to make a video going over internals and maybe a couple more uh, in-depth guides about some of the mechs and weapons that you guys requested for me. But yeah, just keep in touch. Guys, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and give me suggestions whenever you can, because I can always use them. But for now, yeah, this is Hobbs, signing off.